Hello and welcome to this webinar, Numeracy in the Now, Supports for Families at Home. In the current climate, families are at home together. They're learning, living and working together and managing in very difficult circumstances. This series aims to celebrate and highlight opportunities for parents to support their children's numeracy development in everyday life. The work is a collaboration between myself, Avin Bray, Anne Devitt, Jennifer Liston and Melanie Nihoon in the School of Education, Trinity College, Dublin, Maria Kelly in Limerick and Clare Education and Training Board, Breed Murphy from Marino Institute of Education and Claire Carroll in Mary Immaculate College. So let's begin. The COVID-19 pandemic has fundamentally disrupted schooling in most countries around the world. And a recent um, UNESCO report has shown that 90% of the world's students have been affected by national and local school closures. Uh, so when the schools closed, children's education becomes even more dependent on their home environment. And parents are trying to manage this with all the additional pressures of life and care and work um, in the home at the moment. And although the schools are trying very hard to maintain a continuity of learning, and they're doing this very successful in the main, it's not always easy. And the onus still falls on parents to manage and direct what's happening in the home. So what does this actually mean for parents? Well, to a large extent, parents are expected to have, or they may feel like they're expected to have, the time and the headspace to engage with their children and their children's education. The physical space to be able to provide the children and themselves with the opportunity to work and study and engage with their education. Um, the facilities and resources uh, to do so as well. And it requires the social capital of parents to supervise children's learning or even take over the role if the school lacks the capacity to provide distant support. This can lead to a huge sense of pressure. Um, and means that particularly at-risk families without easy access to devices or broadband are increasingly disadvantaged. In another um, point, there's the idea of confidence and the confidence in the students or in the, the parents' ability to support their children's learning, as well as a potential lack of familiarity of subject matter. And that can be a huge barrier for many parents. And I think particularly when it comes to numeracy and maths concepts, many parents may feel inadequately prepared to support their children. So what do we mean when we talk about numeracy and how are we going to support our children's numeracy development? There are sort of different levels of numeracy. There's fundamental numeracy skills that begin to develop in early, in very young children. And these involve sort of basic skills such as the ability to identify and understand numbers and number in general. And as well as that, then some early computational skills. So the ability to perform simple arithmetical operations and compare magnitudes. But as the kids move on through their primary education, this becomes more sophisticated and involves things like estimation, fractions, proportions, percentages and so on. So this series of videos have been produced through the collaboration of researchers in Trinity College Dublin, Merino Institute of Education, Mary Immaculate College and Limerick and Clare ETB. And while we're all involved in education, not all of us have expertise in primary school education. But those of us who do not are experts as parents. And we do all understand the difficulties that are being faced across the board. So this series involves six videos that provide a window into activities across the early years and primary school spectrum. And what we hope to provide through this series of videos and webinar is a sense of confidence in parents in their own ability to highlight numeracy concepts in their everyday life and to reinforce what they're already doing. Because in the main, parents are already supporting their children's education and their children's numeracy development. The idea is that maths is actually all around us. And we hope that these videos can help to identify how to draw attention to that. I'm now going to uh, invite our first videographer, who is um, Maria Kelly, uh, to talk a little bit. Now, Maria has worked as a resource worker in Limerick and Clare Education and Training Board for over 10 years. And she delivers classes to a wide range of adult learners, including accredited and non-accredited programs up to QQI level five. 
And on a personal level, she is a, a mammy to two small boys, aged three and a half and just over one, who were her very, very helpful assistants. And we're very grateful to um, Daniel and what's that, James for their assistance in, uh, in this way. So I'd like to invite Maria to introduce her video and ask her, her before the video, before we run the video, what did she actually want to achieve um, through this video? So I'd like to say over to you, Maria. Perfect. Thank you, Avin. Um, I suppose the ultimate aim of this video um, is to highlight the ways in which we can support numeracy development in the early years. And that will be in particular through the medium of play. And that can be in whatever format that that play takes, whether it's indoors or outdoors, given the restrictions or free or on, you know, free play, unstructured, um, structured play, play with rules. It doesn't really matter. I suppose what we're doing through that is we're allowing ourselves um, the opportunity to have that time and space to explore numerical concepts with very young children in uh, in a in a very supported way in in a very familiar way and um, I suppose just even when I talk about context and and creating concepts through context um, just the context of this video is that my little boy James his favorite uh, one of his favorite books is um, Julia Donaldson's A Squash and a Squeeze so he decided he wanted to make the little old lady's house so that's where we came up with counting and basic geometry so um, You'll see it there in the video in a minute. Play allows children to explore and make sense of their world. Their natural curiosity and desire for constant discovery creates the framework on which we can develop and enhance their numeracy skills. Play affords children the time and space to explore numerical concepts. For young children, counting takes the form of gathering sticks and stones. Simple addition is seeing how much they have of everything. If it turns out it's too much, then takes them away. Suddenly it's subtraction. Creating and sorting shapes become the building blocks of geometry. Circles, triangles and squares will eventually lead to an understanding of more complex shapes. The language and critical thinking skills developing and emerging in tandem in young children supports their ability to problem solve. Problem solving, in turn, underpins numerical and mathematical concepts. Doing all of this, children are most importantly making connections. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, well done, 18, 19, 20. Equations begin to appear in a most basic format. Children begin to recognise the importance of sequence, size, numbers and the value that is placed on them. Learning through play is not only fun for them, but for us too. Using simple language and basic instructions will help children make connections. Games and puzzles allow children to challenge themselves as they gain confidence in their ability. So many concepts can be explored through water play. Imagination and memory recall allows children to put newly learned concepts into practice. During play, children rely heavily on their senses. Numerical concepts become realities, where 3D shapes can become a hideaway in the garden. Concepts come to life. But above all else, children are having fun.
Thank you so much, Maria. That was really beautiful. And your kids are gorgeous. <laughs> They were very popular, <laughs> <I think. laughs> That's brilliant. So no bribery needed there. Well, so maybe can, you, uh, can you tell me then what aspect, what aspects of numeracy you think were most evident in the the activities that you did, and what what would you say are the key takeaways for parents from this video? Well, I suppose given the age of, of my kids, I mean, um, as you mentioned earlier, they, they fall into, I suppose, the, the category where we're supporting them with their fundamental numeracy skills. Um, and I suppose we're, we're helping them to understand concepts. We're introducing concepts. So like that, it's, it's basic counting, it's, um, it's subtraction, it's, it's sequence, size, shape. It, it's helping them understand through language and supporting them with that. Um, all in all, I suppose it's laying the foundations. Um, I suppose the hope is that they're they're taking several elements of so many concepts and they're starting to piece it together for themselves, um, and they're learning to problem solve and they're doing it all through the medium of play, which is their day's work. Do you know when it's hard work for them and the learning that takes place is immense. And um, I suppose it's just even then for ourselves as parents to recognise that that. While we may not label exactly what they're doing as a three and a half year old or a one year old, if they're stacking shapes or if they're playing with sticks and stones, they are figuring a lot out in a, in a, in a given day. Um, and that adds up over time and it will, it will create the basis for them then to go on and understand more abstract forms of maths or numeracy. Okay. Okay. Um, but just that we are doing it and just to take those couple of minutes maybe to step back and reflect on it, that that's what we are doing. And um, I suppose it's just how we label it. I think you're so right. I think it's really important as parents at the moment to not feel guilty that you're not doing things when actually if you take the time to notice, you actually are doing these things and you are supporting your, your child's um, development, um, even though you may not know it. Thanks a million, Maria. That's fantastic. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and that leads really, really beautifully onto the next video, which is by Jennifer Liston. And Dr. Jennifer Liston is a, a past PE and geography post-primary teacher. And she's currently uh, the leader of the geography strand on the professional master of education in TCD, as well as being a parent again, which is quite, quite good expertise for this kind of thing. Um, so Jennifer, again, before I play the video, I was wondering, could you tell me what did you want to achieve with this video? Okay, um, well firstly, Avin, um, thanks for describing us all as expert parents. Um, oh, I, I, like that, um, I like that term and I think uh, we need to use it a little bit more often, so thanks for that. Um, so um, I suppose you can most definitely see my geography teacher hat in the um, video and um, the maths um, I suppose is what we're going to focus on today. The video I will show is of a treasure hunt with my daughter who's in senior infants and my son who's preschool level. And um, the last week you asked us to do this um, um, Avin, and the theme that my daughter was doing in school was based on pirates. So in this video you see us um, having fun as pirates doing a treasure hunt but once we reach um, the point of a clue and we've to get reach the next point I've um, added in the maths and I suppose equations counting and um, direction within the clues. Look what Ruth found, Matt. Put it where a Mom! A Mom! Pirate. Oh, pirate. Mom! What is it, a pirate? Mom! Treasure. Mom! Hey, Matthew found a clue. Okay, Ruth and Matthew. Oh, Granny, come on. Stand facing Granda John's sheds in the triangle. Take the road to your left. Walk 20 steps. So 20 steps, count your 20 steps. Look to the trees on the right and find a clue. Oh yes, good girl. Just one more to find. 
the treasure. Face grounded, John's shed again. Walk 15 steps straight. Count them out loud now. Seven. Okay, perfect. The treasure will be in front of you. X marks the spot. Keep looking. X marks the spot. Win, I win. Yay, treasure. What did you get? What did X you get? What is in the treasure? I get these. I get these. Oh. I think there's one each. I don't think the pirates would have left two for you. I think it would have been one each. Well done, guys. What do you say? Thank you. No, ahoy, ahoy, you're pirates. Ahoy, ahoy. <laughs>
um, and they're doing these things because they want to and they see a purpose in it. And I think that is is so important. Um, so thanks a million, Jennifer. That's really no great. No problem. No problem. Thanks for asking me, Evie. Yeah. Okay, and that brings us on to our third video then, which is by Dr. Anne Devitt. And Anne is an assistant professor and the director of research um, at the School of Education in Trinity College. And she works mainly in the area of language and literacy education and is currently the principal investigator on an IRC funded family digital literacy project in partnership with NALA. And that is a real mouthful to try and say. <laughs> I challenge anybody to take that on. <laughs> so she actually proposed this idea for the numeracy series following on from the success of her Literacy on the Loose webinar, which is also available on the TCD YouTube channel. And most importantly, she is also a parent of three primary school aged children. So Anne, I'm going to ask you the same question then. What did you want to achieve with this video? Yeah, so what did I want to achieve with this? Well, I was the lucky, well, I was lucky in that um, I, w I just wanted to do the kitchen uh, and cooking because um, there is just such a wealth of um, possibilities when it comes to uh, the kitchen and mats. Um, and so the, I guess achieving two things with this, one is a real world useful skill uh, where mats is absolutely, or numeracy is absolutely essential. Um, that it's authentic uh, and fun and um, and I suppose the particular things in there I was looking at were measuring and estimating and and then a whole range of other things that maths of it maths concepts I suppose available to you in the in the kitchen here is our recipe for leek and potato soup so can you tell me what goes into it um, one part onion one part potato Three pie leek and five stock. Yeah, five part stock. Okay, so uh, we're going to use this cup as the measure. So how many cups of onion? One. One, yeah. Okay, so do you want to take some onions and see more or less? So obviously it's going to be chopped up. About how many onions do you think will make up a cup? One and a half. Uh, about how many potatoes do we need for a cup? So we've got a really giant spot. So don't try and smile, it'll never get out. One. One. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Definitely one spot. Uh, and then for uh, how many parts week again? Uh, three. Yeah, two. Cool. So about how many weeks do you think? About how many weeks in one? One now. Three cups worth. So that's okay, three, so one and a half. Four cups and a half. Cool, yeah. So, or four, four leeks and, and a half. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, so we're checking the estimate for leeks. So we had, what was it, three parts leek? Four parts. Four, four and a half leeks. Um, so that is two leeks I've cut up. So how many cups does that end up with? One cup. Squid. So it looks like now it's one leek equals one cup. So that's two of them done. How many more do I have to do? One. One. Super. Thank you. For five parts stock, three part leaf, one part onion, one part potato. Hey Kathleen, so what's up next? Okay, so we're making plain scones. And we're going to double the recipe again, or maybe even triple if we have enough. So, uh, how many should we get? Do you remember we doubled the recipe? We, we should get about 24. We should get about 24. They look like big ones though, so we might have a bit less. Actually, the people have me up less. How many do you think of? Let's give it a try. Let's try and get as much as possible out of it.
That's brilliant. And not only are you doing maths, you're actually getting your dinner made as well. And it's, uh, you know, pretty good. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That's just a gorgeous video. Um, so again, can you identify the numeracy elements that you addressed by going through that activity and what you think the key messages for parents would be? Yeah. So um, as far as maths concepts go, there were uh, like I actually had lots more video where we were doing estimating of cup size and weighing and volume and all kinds of different things. So in that you have multiplication, um, you've got skip counting, you've got uh, measures and volume and estimating and so on. But literally you couldn't, you can't pick up a thing in the kitchen without doing some math. So it was it was a very easy win, if you, if you know what I mean? It was very kind of no matter what you're trying to do, there's loads of maths in there. So uh, I suppose the key messages for parents that are thinking about this would be, um, you know, the kids in school, they'll be getting worksheets asking them to do, you know, work out the, the numbers of ingredients or yeah. the measures of things, and they'll seem totally out of context in a classroom. But this is a, a real-world, authentic, fun way to, to do maths concepts. And you don't even have to name them for the child, but you certainly can if you want, you know, and, you know to tell them, what they're doing and wow, isn't that great? You're doing such great stuff. Um, and I suppose another one other thing that I thought maybe as a key message for parents, like I find some of the calculations on the fly like that hard. So keep stick when you're, you know, you can certainly stay in your comfort zone. And if you use American recipes, they're all about cups. So you can stay with, you know, one cup of this, two cups of that instead of like 3.85 grams or something. So, you know, you, you can push out your own boundaries. Um, in terms of numeracy or uh, and the child's but also you know work within your your own area and enjoy it because it, it was a lot of fun i think that's really lovely and i think if you're working in in cups then to identify that that's actually ratios so the whole idea behind the cup measurement is that you're you're using ratios so that it makes it easier to to have a recipe or double a recipe but again if you actually if you know yourself you might not know as a parent that you're actually doing ratios but if you're able to identify that, that to your kids, then when they come up to ratios in their, their curriculum, they'll be able to have a context for that. And I think, again, that'll make it more easy and uh, be better able to stick. So uh, thanks a million for that, Anne. That's fantastic. Um, our next video is moving on to another context where an awful lot of kids really enjoy working and playing, and that's using Lego. So in this uh, video, Breed, who is she actually is an expert in the area of um, primary school education and early child education. She's an assistant lecturer in maths education at Marino Institute of Education with a background in primary education, maths achievement and attitudes towards maths among primary school children. So we're in good company here. And she collaborated on this video coming up with Claire Carroll, who lectures in the STEM education department in Mary Immaculate College and where she teaches maths education and coding and particularly research in children's computational thinking. So Breed, if you're there, I'd like to ask you, um, what did you want to achieve, or what did you and Claire want to achieve um, with this video? So what was your intention with this video? Okay, so um, our video ties in really nicely with Maria and Jennifer's videos about developing numeracy through play. Um, the child you will see in the video, she enjoys playing with Lego and she loves horses. And here and there throughout the video, you would hear her mentioning um, the horses. So when we set out to, to make the video, our aim was to show how children's play with Lego can be a superb context to explore mathematical ideas to help children to develop their reasoning and to facilitate the use of mathematical language. We wanted to emphasise the opportunities for children of all ages to develop their numeracy in a concrete, fun and child-centred way at home. This video gives some ideas about how children can learn maths and use maths vocabulary while playing with Lego. Lego is a popular toy among children of all ages in primary school and playing with Lego can be a great way of learning maths. In this video, you will see some activities that help children develop early mathematical skills like classifying, matching, comparing and ordering, skills typically developed in the infant classes. Then you will see some activities for exploring length and symmetry. I'm going to build a stable and I'm going to sort the bricks uh, on colour. I can sort them is on the number of little circles on the top of them. Hmm? 
Why does this one not go in the group with these ones? Because it, cause it, um, it has one, like, these have eight and this only has four. Alright. Can this one go in here? Yep. Why? Uh, because it has eight. And does it matter that it doesn't have the same colour? Nope. Why not? Because uh, it's only the amount of circles on the top. build a long table then you have to find the longest block so this is the longest one uh, this is the next one now this one and then this one and then this one this one and the last one is this little one and what's the last one uh, the last one is just one. And what we call that? What do you mean? If this one is the longest. Oh, the shortest. This one is the? Shortest. The shortest, very good. Now we will look at some activities suitable for older children. In the next part of the clip, you will see some jumps for the horses. First, the height of each jump will be estimated. Katie is using the benchmark of the length of her fingernail to help her figure out the height of each fence. Then she will measure it using her ruler. Seven or eight centimeters. This one is probably ten or eleven centimeters. So now I'm going to measure with my with my finger, and then I'm going to measure with my ruler. Why are you going to measure with your finger? Uh, because my finger is about a centimeter. Your fingernail is about a centimeter. Very good. It's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven centimeters. Make a logo yeah. for our stables, and it has to be symmetrical. So we're gonna check out any of these symmetrical. The last one. So first we're gonna do it vertically. So if you fold it uh, vertically, then it will be uh, then it will be the same on both sides because the eyes will be going onto the eyes, the mouth will be going onto the mouth, and the nose will fold over onto itself, and then the red would fold over onto the red, and the orange will onto the orange. And if you were to do it hor um, if you were to do it horizontally, it wouldn't, because the nose would be folding over onto the mouth, and the red would be folding over onto the orange, and then the eyes would be folding over onto the mouth. If you were to be doing it ver um, horizontally, Diagonal. diagonally, then uh, it wouldn't be the same because the red would be folding onto the orange, and then the eyes would be folding onto here on the mouth. And the nose wouldn't be falling onto it, onto itself either. So what would you say about both sides of the line there? Uh, Are they the same? Nope. That was gorgeous, Breed, and thanks to Claire and Katie as well. For, for taking part in that. It was really, really lovely. Um, so again, the same question to you. Uh, when you were talking with uh, Claire and you were coming up with the ideas for this, what were the elements or what were the numeracy concepts that you were hoping to, to draw out? Um, I suppose, I mean, we were really spoiled for choice because Lego is such a versatile resource. So there are so many opportunities. So we decided in this video to focus on early mathematical activities like uh, sorting, um, comparing, ordering, um, classifying and so on, as well as looking at length and um, we also looked at symmetry. But there are loads of other opportunities as well. For example, Lego could be used to explore fractions, multiplication, area and perimeter and so on. Um, we, I suppose one of the things we really wanted to hi highlight is that parents can play a massively important role in helping their child's numeracy by talking to them, asking them questions like, how did you figure this out? Why did you put this block here? Is there any way you could have done this? All of these questions help children to develop their mathematical reasoning and give them the opportunity to use their mathematical language. So I suppose our key message is play, solve problems, talk and have fun. That's a really excellent message. And I think the idea of asking your kids to, to solve problems themselves. So when they come to you and say, well, how do you do this? And you go, well, what do you think? It's, it just encourages that critical thinking and the, the actual conceptualization of the ideas when they're encouraged and supported to do that. 
in a way that isn't too challenging, obviously. But yeah, it's a, that's a, a really lovely message. So thank you very much to yourself and to Claire and Katie. Thanks, um, so we're moving on to Melanie now. And Dr. Melanie Nihoon is an assist, assistant professor of teacher education in the School of Education in Trinity College. Um, she lectures in teaching pedagogy, school placement, research methods, and in the sociology of education. And in addition to all of that, she is a mum of four. So, Melanie, um, I'd like to ask you, what, were, what was your intention when you decided to do, take this on as your topic? What was your, um, what was your hope? What, what were you hoping to achieve? Okay, thanks, Avin. So, um, when you asked about doing this, um, we kind of thought about um, the language um, of mathematics and of numeracy um, at home. And one thing that struck us was when the schools closed, the routine tended to kind of go to one side. In fact, it, it probably collapsed for a number of days. Um, so one of the things we were aware of was time. And we were aware that time is a bit tricky in terms of conceptualizing it because you're working in 60 minutes rather than 10 units, etc. Um, and another thing that came with the routine being small but diminished was there tends to be a bit of anxiety around the day not having a shape on it or not having a routine. So we thought it might be a good idea to think about the times in our day at home and in the different things that we do and to try and structure it a little bit. And that's why we opted to go with this. And one of the things, in, and it goes right to the very last slide where the key messages are, we let the audio play out on it because what I was particularly taken with, um, I did this with Liam, who's 10, and um, he's in fourth class. It was his thinking and his reasoning. And as the others have said, it's allowing that mathematical reasoning to be developed and letting him talk about it. So um, I, I let it go, and it just plays out there to the end. So if you want to start it. This video shows how we can use numeracy skills to divide up our days at home into blocks of time and to record how much time we spend doing different activities in our day. The video focuses on developing addition and subtraction skills when adding and subtracting hours and minutes in time. I guess breakfast time, or dinner time, or lunch time, or bed time, or homework time, or movie time. How many minutes? Or in an hour? 60. And how many hours are in a day? 24. And how many seconds are in a minute? 60. And if you had a quarter of an hour, how many minutes would you have? 15. And if you had a half an hour, how many minutes would you have? 30. And if you were to add up a quarter of an hour and a half an hour. How many minutes would you have then? 45. And is there another time in the day that you like? Movie time. Okay, what movies do you like? Marvel movies. And how long do Marvel movies take? Up to three hours. So 60 minutes in an hour. How many minutes is in a three hour Marvel movie? 180 minutes. That's a long time to watch a movie. It might be nearly, it's the end of the a very, very first character. Okay. So it has to be long. Okay. So can you think about two times in the day that are, where it takes you a small amount of time to do something? Washing my hands. Okay. And how long does that take? Well, if I could choose, it would probably only take like 10 seconds, but it has to be like 20 seconds for it in your hands. Okay. Talking to your child about the activities they do during the day helps them to structure their day and think about how they're spending their time. Help them to record the time they spend on different activities and make a list of activities and times. So we're going to think about subtracting time, all right? Okay. So let's have a look at this, okay? And in the example, we have seven hours and 19 minutes, and we want to take away two hours and 28 minutes from that. But the rule is we need to take one hour and bring it across to the minutes. Why would we do that? How many minutes are in an hour? 
60. Okay, so we're going to take 60 minutes from this here and we're going to bring it across there. And then that gives us 6 hours so and 79 minutes, 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 doesn't it? Yes. Where did I get the 79 from? The 7th hour in the hours and you brought it over to the minutes which created 79. Good, okay. And then this stays the same, doesn't it? Because this is what we're going to take away. Yes. All right. So can we have a go at doing that then? You're going to use your pen to do it? All right. So let's start on the hours side. So now we have six hours minus two hours. So do you want to write down what Where we might get I for that? the answer? In here. Very good. Okay, and we brought over our 60, so that has become 79. So now we want to take 28 from 79. So do you want to try and do that? Well, how would we come a 1? Mm -hmm. And that would... That would be come a 5. Very good. So do you want to read out your answer now? 4 hours, 51 minutes. Very good. What's the rule when we're adding in time? You have, must keep the hours and the minutes in separate areas. Okay, so you keep them together, don't you? Until the end. You keep your hours together and your minutes together until the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the next sum, Liam, okay, tell me the time. So you have to add two times together. So what's the first one? One hour, 57 minutes. And what's the second one? Six hours. 22 minutes. Okay, so let's add them up. 6 plus 1, what does that give us here? 7. Okay. Okay, so let's, we have to add here on this side now. So 57 and 22. So let's add that up. What does that give us? 2 plus 7 is? 9. Very good. And 2, 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay, but how many hours are in, how many minutes are in an hour? 60, so that will become 19, and this will become 8 hours. Okay, how does that become 8 hours? What did you do with the 7? I added the hour with that I took from the minutes side and put it on the hour side because it's added up to an hour and they are meant to be kept separate. Okay, very so good. So I separated them and I put them together. At the end. And okay. in, the right, in the right places. Okay. Four hours, 59 minutes, plus two hours, 13 minutes. Okay, so let's add, start here on the hours. So no. two plus four? Six, okay. equals six. And now this slide. Yeah. Nine plus three equals a 12. Mm -hmm. So you'd need to carry the one mm -hmm. and put down it. Oh, and that would, two, yeah. and okay. then it would go on to that side. Okay. And five plus two is seven. But since it's, but since that's over the allowed amount. What's the allowed it, amount? The highest you, it can go in the minutes is fifty nine. And is it, the highest, is it not sixty? If it was sixty, then all of then all of it would be brought over. 59 is the highest it can be before at least some of the minutes have to be brought over. Okay, understand. Right, so what does it become then? 72 becomes? 12. Okay, and what does 6 become? 7. How does it become 7? Because I had to take 60 minutes from the minute side because that is it. It is an hour, okay. and so they I had to put the hour where it belonged on the hour side. Okay. Thanks a million, Melanie. And again, the the thought process and listening to Liam go through that um, that description of what it was and. Uh, you asking him the questions where sometimes it was quite clear that you had a different idea or a different concept mm. um, 
it was fascinating to hear it. Um, so in term, terms of numeracy then, what do you think was the most important uh, message that you, you, you addressed in this video? Well, I suppose using the skills of addition and subtraction, I mean, you know, in, in the first instance, but also the real-time application of those skills in the daily, um, you know, routine and in terms of time. And, you know, in the same way as the others have said, um, kind of trying to use play as much as possible. And obviously, there's some schoolwork involved, but using play as much as possible. And for him to recognize that the time that you spend on all the activities is worthwhile time and it's important time. And when you look at it and separate it out, there's a sense of achievement in it um, and there's a sense of success. So from a literacy or a numeracy perspective, rather, there was some literacy work in it. The language all right, of mathematics, um, you heard him there saying you'd have to carry that and take away that, but mainly to develop the mathematical reasoning. And I suppose the other thing, um, and it can be hard, like as a qualified teacher, sometimes I find this difficult with them, let him make mistakes let him take risks because mathematics is all about taking risks to work it out and to get to a process. It never occurred to me uh, that you, 59 minutes would have been the limit. I automatically thought it was 60, but he put me straight on that very quickly and, you know, I'll never get, I'll never get that one wrong again. But, um, yeah, so listen to your child and ultimately we're at home so much of them now. Talk to them, listen to them and ask them kind of sensible questions um, around it. And if you show an interest, in what they're doing and a con all right and obviously praise them as well so um yeah it was good it was an enjoyable experience time is a tricky enough concept i think for kids to understand mm -hmm. um and for adults actually sometimes as well so um it was certainly worthwhile so thank you that's brilliant and i think you've you've tapped into a very good point there which is uh, allow them to make mistakes but also allow yourself to make mistakes um, I think the biggest kick that my kid gets out of doing maths with me is laughing at me because I, I couldn't get her fifth class maths right or I made a mistake doing her fifth class maths and I'm supposed to be a maths teacher. But it gives them the confidence to think that they can actually then talk to you about what they're doing and you might not always be right, they might not always be right and that's okay. And I think that that's a really important message. As a parent trying to work with your, your kids, you don't always have to have all the answers. You can work it out together. Um, and I think that uh, to have the confidence to be able to do that and not have to be the expert all the time is really, really important. So the last video is from me. So it's always a bit weird to introduce yourself, but I'll do that anyway. I'm Avine Bray and I'm an assistant professor of maths education in the School of Education in Trinity College, Dublin. And I have two girls. Uh, my youngest daughter is Zoe and she's in sixth class and she's the one who worked with me to put this video together. Um, and then my older daughter is in first year. But I like the, the fact that we started right with the, the really early years education and that kind of way of, of working with children. And we've come all the way through the full spectrum to sixth class. So the full primary um, the, the full primary curriculum has been covered in, well, covered is a bit strong, but in uh, in these six videos um, and uh, so when I made this with Zoe I was hoping to put some of the concepts that she's been uh, been addressing in school and in the work that she's been doing into practice um, to give a real life context and to give some kind of an answer to that when am I ever going to use this question that I get quite frequently and that certainly as a maths teacher you're, you're faced with quite frequently so really to put it into a context where she could see that it, it had a real life application um, and I, I'll talk a little bit more after the video um, because I explain a good bit about this in the video. So what we've decided to do was, uh, first of all, see if we can estimate the area of our garden and then decide what portion of that we want to keep as a wildflower patch. So a bit of landscape gardening uh, using, using maths and numeracy. So the first thing we need to do is to have an estimate of the area of the garden. So how do you calculate area? 
Well, you multiplied the width by the length. Okay, Zoe, so just to give it a guess then, what kind of area, what kind of length and width do you think this garden is? Um, but do you know how big is a metre? A metre is about that size, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, okay, so how many of those? Maybe eight and ten. Eight metres by ten metres? I have no idea. But okay, so in order to get a slightly more accurate measurement, we have a tool, which is a measuring tape. But the measuring tape isn't big enough to measure the whole garden. So what we're going to do is ask Zoe to take five steps and calculate the distance that those steps are and then use that per step to measure the garden. So what we found is that five of Zoe's steps measures three metres. Okay Zoe, do you want to go and walk up the garden and see how long it is? So that was 20 steps. Yeah. Five steps is three meters. Three meters. How many sets um, of five steps is in 20? What? In terms of meters, then, how long is that? Um, so that's four by three of this? Yeah. 12. So 12 meters, roughly, is the length of our garden. What about the width of our garden, then? Do you want to do the same thing there? Okay, so, we, so you said it was 15 steps, which is how many meters? Nine meters. Excellent. And then if that's nine meters and that was 12 meters, what's the area of our garden? 108 meters. Fantastic. Okay, so Zoe, if you draw a picture of what you think our garden is sort of like, so the long side is 12 meters and the short side is? Nine meters. Nine meters. Perfect. And we have a trampoline somewhere as well, don't we? Yep, that's here. So where do you think it'd be best to put the uh, wildflower patch? Probably here. Okay, so if you draw in what you think it should look like, and then we can have a guess at what size it might be. So would you say that's about, would you say it's half the size of the garden, quarter, a third? What do you think that Probably is? Probably a quarter. Okay, so if that's a quarter, what area is that going to be? So... The area of our entire garden is 108 meters squared. Yeah. Then we divide that by four, which is 27 meters squared. Perfect. So that was our video and uh, we really enjoyed making it. I think that was one of the first things I want to say. But in terms of the numeracy concepts, we had, we sort of saw estimation, um, measurement and area, but they were all within a context that was of interest to my daughter. So Zoe was interested in doing this. She had seen the question of, okay, you've got this size of a garden and there's this size of a pond and what's the area? But she'd never sort of made that connection with being able to do it and make it in our own garden. And the other thing that I thought was really interesting was when I asked her to make an estimate, she had no idea. So she really didn't have a sense of what size and what we meant by area and what we meant by meters and things like that. Although she knew what a meter was, she couldn't sort of fit it into actually using it as a measurement in her garden. And I think that that's, that's, a, that's, that's an issue that we all face, even as adults, that we don't really necessarily understand the numbers that we're using. Um, and this is a, a, an activity that I do with many people, is to ask them, well, how big is a billion? Um, and if you think of that in terms of something that's of meaning to you, so something like seconds, if you think of a thousand seconds is 12 minutes, a million seconds is 17 days, and a billion seconds is 32 years, roughly, then suddenly you've got a much stronger understanding of what those numbers actually mean. And I think in terms of, of getting the kids to actually measure things out, it gives them that context and it gives them that sense of an understanding of what they're talking about. So that when they 
answer a question in, in a textbook or in an exam or wherever it is that isn't in real life, if they get the wrong answer, they'll have much more of a, of a likelihood of being able to go, hang on a second, that doesn't make any sense because they'll have an understanding of how the numbers relate to each other. And I think that's probably one of the most important um, concepts, numeracy concepts that I, can, I would uh, see coming out of this video is a confidence and an ability to estimate answers uh, based on what information that you have. Um, so that's what I, I think would be my key message. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, the other thing that I wanted to say was that, as I said, we, we really enjoyed making the video. And I think that actually doing something that's creative with your kids around mathematics, around numeracy, really around anything, but having that sort of constructivist approach to learning where you create something, I think is really, really exciting and important for the children. So that if one of my ideas was to say to Zoe afterwards, well, why don't you go and create a video that could teach younger children some of your maths concepts? Because she so enjoyed actually doing the editing and all of that part of it. And she actually learned another skill. So she was off doing editing of other little videos. And I think that that was another really nice thing that came out of this whole experience from my point of view. Um, but I think as a parent to, to say to your kids, well, how would you explain that to me? and get them making something that explains the, the concepts could be a really nice way of doing things as well. So that's my portion of it done then. I'd like to again then offer my sincere oh. thanks to everybody who has collaborated on this, um, but also to all of you who've actually come and taken part uh, and participated in the webinar. It's been a really, really interesting experience and very enjoyable. And uh, so thank you to everybody. It's great to see everybody here. We just hope these are of value. That's, I guess, the main thing we were trying to do on the math side and on the literacy side is just to help parents out in a time of difficulty. Yeah, and I think the main thing is to try and get rid of the fear and the guilt because in the main, I think parents are doing things without realising it. Um, yeah. So, And I think one of the other things that's come through all of the videos is the importance of play the importance of having a context that's of interest to your kids. So if you can do that, if you can just manage to identify the numeracy concepts in what you're doing anyway, then you're on a winner. You're doing this without, uh, without even trying. <laughs>